Mysteries Revealed Unity Nestor woke up the next day refreshed and happy, thinking about the rare opportunity to participate in an exclusive ritual with Selene. He thought about how the ritual would compare to rituals he'd done in the past. Nestor sat and meditated as he had been instructed to do. Then he read the scrolls he carried with him. Next, he studied the notes he had been writing. Then he just sat and stopped thinking. It was a relief to have a totally blank mind. He decided to rest until it was time to meet Selene. As sunset approached, he put on comfortable clothes, got his water bag and the items he'd packed, and went to the Tholos. Selene is inside, preparing for the ritual, and waiting for him to arrive. She greeted Nestor and they talked about their day, and how excited they are about the ritual they were about to start. Let us go to the altar. I've arranged the objects we will use there. As a priestess, it's a common sight to see me performing rituals here, and nobody will disrupt us. Selene has placed a kylix on the altar. It's decorated with the image of Hecate holding two torches. Next to it is a small alpi, and a few objects. She begins with a prayer to the gods and goddesses, then praises Asclepios, and asks him to grant them health and understanding. She carefully pours liquid from the alpi into the kylix. She praises Hecate, and asks for her protection and guidance. She then drinks the liquid from the kylix and sets it down. She carefully pours liquid from the alpi and turns to Nestor, telling him to repeat what she has done. He praises Hecate, and asks for her protection and guidance. He drinks the liquid from the kylix and sets it down. Selene then takes the alpi and walks to the doorway of the tholos facing the setting sun. She praises the light that illuminates the world, and pours the little remaining liquid on the ground. She then walks to the center of the tholos and says, May our minds be clear and lucid, and our hearts be open and receptive. We ask for doors to open and reveal all we wish to know. The first part of the ritual is complete. Selene takes the items on the altar and places them in her bag. The next part of the ritual will happen in a private building reserved for the priestesses. They leave the Tholos and Selene asks Nestor to follow her. Walking down the main road, they turn off on a path that leads up to the retreat. It's a winding path that takes them to a hillside overlooking the sanctuary below. They stop along the way to enjoy the spectacular view of the sanctuary as the sun disappears below the horizon. Continuing along the path, they reach the retreat and go to a room with direct access to the lawn that overlooks the valley. They unpack the things they brought with them and make themselves comfortable. Selene takes a few items out of her bag and places them on a small table. One of the items is the lamp Nestor gave her, and she lights the wick. The room glows with a soft warm light. Tonight the moon is full, and the moonlight will be brightest. We should see it rising soon. For me, it's an auspicious night, having been born on a full moon. And you were born on the longest night of the year. Anaxagoras said that the sun provides the moon with light as the sun hides at night. The moon gathers this light and then releases it to illuminate the darkness. I believe your unique birth is a sign that you'll bring light into the world when it's darkest. It's kind of you to say this, and I hope it's true that I will be a light to the world. My activities as a priestess have given me knowledge and insights that I can share, and illuminate the minds and souls of the people I serve. I believe your education and studies will allow you to do the same. Nestor and Selene arrange their cushions so they will be comfortable for the night. They are both in a pleasant mood, and simply sit silently looking at each other. 
Then Selini notices the moon is coming up. Now it's time to recite the prayer to Hecate, asking her to open the gateways. Selini stands up and walks outside to face the full moon that's now visible coming up over the horizon. Raising her arms up in the air, she evokes the goddess. Hecate, who can travel between worlds, and reveals what is there, allow us to be with you at the crossroads. Allow us to cross the threshold into transcendent worlds where mysteries are revealed. Be with us, guide us, and protect us. And grant us powers to know things as they truly are, and to know what is real. Selene begins singing a song that Nestor heard at Eleusis. It's beautiful, and creates a pleasant and relaxed mood. Nestor stands looking at the moon as it rises, and notices the light looks different. And he feels different. Looking out into the darkness, with the sanctuary buildings below, the scene is beginning to take on a surreal quality. Everything seems enhanced, and more colorful. Objects are more distinct and defined. His mind is sharper and more alert, and within his body a pleasant glow is developing. As time passes, he experiences an increasing feeling of euphoria. Is the potion we drank the same as the kukion? It's affecting me in a similar way. It's like the kukion, but was created to allow a very positive experience, and is more effective in opening gateways into other worlds. It can be very beneficial to your mind and soul if you want this to happen, and Asclepios is here to help us. I'm also feeling the effects of the potion. I suggest we go back inside to sit and be comfortable. Back inside, they arrange their cushions and sit by the table. The light from the lamp creates a magical mood as light and shadow dance on the walls. As Nestor and Selene look at each other, both can see that they are having a very good experience. And both of them are aware of their minds becoming more active. Nestor is seeing the familiar aura coming from Selene, but now it's brighter, and her body has become fainter. As he stares at her, he sees a ghostly transformation begin, as she changes from one person he knows into another. What he's seeing is vague and nebulous, and eventually he is back to seeing just Selene. I'm imagining that we are a synthesis of all the people we meet in the world. We have our own identity, but it's what we've constructed from all our experiences, and other people are what we draw from. I suppose it's not just people, everything we encounter in the world becomes a part of who we are. May I ask, what are your thoughts about this? I believe this is true, and we also draw from what we experience within ourselves. Our thoughts and emotions are experienced by our true self, and this inner experience also determines who we are. I am thinking that what exists in other worlds is also part of who we are. Hearing this, is like a command that opens a door to another world. The potion is having a strong effect on him now, and he's taken to places beyond the room they're in. Nestor sits quietly as a series of visions come to him. The places he visits seem more real than the world he normally lives in, and it feels like he has become these places. Some of the places are familiar, and some are completely new. He sees many things he doesn't understand but they provoke ideas. And there are things he sees that give him a greater understanding of what he already knows. He's transported back to the Telesterion, and before him are Hades and Persephone, wearing royal robes. He sees Hecate holding two torches. She begins walking back into the darkness, and the realm of Hades becomes visible. As she continues to walk, Nestor is made aware of how unimaginably large the underworld is. He sees an uncountable number of spirits, and the unlimited resources there, and is overwhelmed. Then he remembers the secrets he learned during his initiation. He remembers watching Selene, surrounded by an aura, as the torchbearers escorted Persephone out of the Telesterion. He is transported to his home in Athens, and is at the Acropolis looking out over the city. In his mind, he sees the city as an interconnected web of people, aware of each other, and themselves. He thinks about how he's one of the people in the city. Standing alone on the steps of the Parthenon, he can see the Aegean Sea, and far away the port of Epidaurus. He remembers he was in a room with Selene doing a ritual with her, and is suddenly back in the room. Selene is looking at him, 
sitting serenely and smiling. You've been on a long journey. Hours have passed. Will you tell me what you've experienced? The potion is still having a strong effect on Nestor, but now he wants to talk. He tells her everything he can remember since Selene last spoke to him. The visit to the Telesterion and to Athens was significant, and he remembers this clearly. After he finishes his story, he has a revelation. When I was experiencing the realm of Hades, I believe I was experiencing the deepest parts of my mind. Like the subterranean underworld, the world hidden below my conscious mind is a vast storehouse of thoughts, feelings, and experiences. It's an integral part of my consciousness, the subconscious, that's only accessible when I sleep, or during these rituals. I've also had this thought, that my conscious self is connected to a world that's mysterious and vast, but hidden and protected. When I'm in this world, I'm aware of my experiences there, but have very little control over what is happening. It's a world that has its own mind that I am a part of. I've witnessed an interesting phenomenon during the initiation of the Mystai. They will all act as one, as if they all share a single mind. It may be that they have a shared subconscious, and the thoughts they have in common are guiding them. Could it be that the collective experiences and lives of all conscious beings combine together to form a single consciousness? A collective subconscious hidden deep in the mind of each individual? I suppose that's possible. I've dreamed of things I've never seen before. And people have told me they've also seen these things in their dreams. Somehow, we are connected in this hidden world and are having experiences there, like we have in the waking world. That reminds me of the sense of connectedness I had on the steps of the Parthenon. I felt we were all part of one city, one world. Each of us were individuals, but at the same time, we are one people, one soul. Nestor is silent, thinking of the implications of these ideas. Then his attention shifts to Selene. She's been having her own experience, and Nestor would like to hear what it was. Selene, will you please tell me about what you have just experienced? I also went to many places. I relived rituals from the past. I communed with goddesses that I revere and listened to their wisdom. Hecate appeared, and I followed her as she illuminated our path with her torches. We came to the crossroads of the mortal and immortal worlds. I asked Hecate to show me her mind, so I could understand what she saw. She allowed this, and I perceived all the worlds as one, one world that extended forever and it was as if I existed in all the worlds at once. I was able to know what existed at any place, just by wanting to. And I felt like I had become the interconnectedness of this one world. Then Hecate said it was time to return to this room. We traveled back to Epidaurus, and as we neared this room, she disappeared. But the light that traveled with us remained. I walked into the room and realized the light was coming from my body. I looked at you and saw light was also coming from you. I sat and rested comfortably, enjoying the pleasant feelings produced by the potion, until you returned from your own journey. As Nestor listens to Selene, he begins experiencing what she's describing. He surrenders to the effects the potion is having on him, and is transported to the crossroads, standing next to Selene. A sense of unification, of all worlds coming together as one, permeates his being. He's sure what she's describing is possible, because his intuition is telling him it's true. The great philosophers believe there's a unity that's shared by all things, an all-inclusive, interconnected, oneness. Listening to your voice, I'm experiencing this oneness. I feel blessed that you can bring me into this awareness. Nestor sits, immersed in thought. After a while, he's more present, and is focused on Selene. It's midnight, and the moon is now overhead. Selene has been waiting for this moment, and stands up. Her personal ritual includes a moon bath, and she announces that she's going outside into the moonlight to do this. Nestor's not sure what to do, so he follows her outside. Selene removes her clothes and goes to an open grassy area, and stands with her arms up, welcoming the moonlight as if she's being showered with water. Nestor, Thinking he should also do this, 
removes his clothes and joins her. They stand looking up at the moon, bathing in its light. Nestor looks at Selene and has a flashback to the Telesterion. During the initiation, he saw light coming from Persephone as she picked daffodils. Now he's seeing the same light radiating from Selene, and he's suddenly aware of how attractive she is. A flood of thoughts and emotions go through him, but one thought prevails, he's not like Hades, and does not act based solely on his own desires. Nestor stands facing Selene, enraptured by her beauty, and by the pure joy of the moment they're sharing. She looks at him, and how happy he is, and is also induced into a feeling of pure ecstasy. It is a perfect moment, elevating them into an even higher state of consciousness. As they stand facing each other, brightly lit by the silver-blue moonlight, they see each other transform into radiant beings of light. The light radiating from within them is bright and reassuring, and their bodies have taken on a supernatural appearance. They look deep into each other's eyes, and watch as the window into their souls opens up. They are perfect complements to each other, both the same, and yet separate individuals, with many differences in total harmony with each other. At this moment, they understand what seemed so familiar when they first met. They are together in their own timeless world, fully aware of their true selves, and seeing it echoed in each other. The moment is a catalyst, and a higher level of consciousness emerges in both of them. Together, they spontaneously enter a mutual, transcendent state. There's a synergistic merging of their individual selves into one unified soul. And because of the lives Nestor and Selene have lived, it's the union of the rational and mystical mind. Pure magic is in full effect. As they peer deep into each other's eyes, they slowly begin to move closer to each other, unaware that they are doing this. And then they embrace, feeling as if they have fully merged into one being. They are each aware of their individual true self, but now it's their mutually created shared self that predominates. Nestor and Selene have become a single unified consciousness, aware of all things in a single, eternal instant. It's a consciousness in which everything is contained, and knows all things at the same time. They are within the mortal and immortal worlds, the underworld, and the other world simultaneously. Nestor and Selene remain in this shared state for a long time. Eventually they become more aware of their physical selves, standing together in a loving embrace under the moonlight. They feel the life and vitality within them, and the strength and energy of their bodies. Nestor and Selene discover they are also in physical harmony with each other. A warm rush of energy flows through them, and they feel healthy and alive. And then, like waking up from a dream, they are standing quietly in the grassy area, overlooking the sanctuary. A strong clear awareness of everything around them fills their minds. They spontaneously end their embrace and hold hands, and take in the panorama visible from their vantage point on the hill. They look out at everything, imagining what exists in each of these places, and what other people might be doing. It's an enhanced awareness of the world, and everything is very present. It's very late at night, and as they stand looking at the vista before them, they become aware of the cooler temperature for the first time. They go back inside the room and put on their clothes. They sit down and get comfortable, not saying anything. There are no words that can capture what they've experienced that night. The potion is still active, creating a pleasant mood, as they float between the waking world and the world of dreams. As the night comes to its end, Nestor and Selene lay down together, silently remembering all that's happened, their connection with each other, and peacefully contemplate what it all means. They are together in their own timeless world, and as the dawn approaches, they fall blissfully asleep.